Hi, this is Dale Coiner with Open Road Outfitters. If you're planning to pull a trailer with your motorcycle, you need to install a hitch and wiring. Now, most folks are comfortable putting a hitch on their bike, but when it comes to the electrical stuff, well, not as much. It's actually easier than you might think. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm going to explain how to choose the right wiring harness for your bike, and I'll show you how to install it the right way. So what is the right way and why do we want to use an isolating harness? Well, you might remember from years past, you just splice in the wires for a, a trailer and ride away. Some folks still do that, but it's not the best approach. Today's bikes use small gauge wire in the harness in order to save weight. And when you add additional lights, the circuit can't drive them at full brightness. And a greater number of bikes actively monitor electrical circuits for extra power draw that might signal a problem. An isolating wiring harness uses a set of small solid state relays in a sealed weatherproof package to control the lights on your trailer. It ensures that your bike will be able to drive all the lights on the bike and the trailer at full brightness. But just as importantly, it also isolates the trailer electrically from your bike. If something happens to the trailer's wiring or the harness leading back to the trailer, your bike's lights will still operate normally. Plus, this is the cleanest, easiest way to add trailer wiring to your bike. Now, before we get to the installation, I want to explain a topic that leads to a lot of confusion. Because in order to install the right wiring, you need to know whether your trailer is a four-wire, or a five-wire trailer. Most trailers manufactured in the US and made specifically for motorcycles are what we call five-wire systems. That's because they have a set of brake lights that operate separately from the turn signals. This would include all the trailers we sell, the Escapades, Timeouts, Mini Mates, American Legend, and so on. This matches how your bike is set up. Your bike has a brake light that operates on a separate circuit from the turn signals. And when you add up the signal circuits, plus an electrical ground, that's five wires. So, if you have a five-wire trailer with separate turn signals and brake lights, you want to use a five-wire harness kit. That includes just two pieces, a relay and a sub-harness. The sub-harness will be different depending on the type of bike you have, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Trailers that are imported or a trailer that's designed for a car may have combined brake and turn signals. For example, trailers from Harbor Freight and Piggybacker are four-wire trailers. They have just one pair of lights on the back. This means a four-wire trailer uses one less circuit and that makes it a little different than your bike. You can't directly wire a four-wire trailer to your bike because you won't have a brake signal. So for trailers with combined brake and turn signals, you need the four-wire kit. This includes the same components as before, the relay, the sub-harness, and a converter that takes your bike's five-wire system, makes it compatible with a four-wire trailer by adding the brake signal to the turn signals. These are all separate components, so if you get a different trailer later that is a five-wire trailer, you can take this converter out and make your wiring compatible with the new trailer. Okay, let's take a look at the installation. Now we start by installing a sub-harness. This is the part that attaches to your bike and is bike specific. This is a sub-harness for an 1800 Goldwing. On a Goldwing, you remove the center panel between the saddlebags in the rear and you'll find a group of plugs to connect this to. This is the sub-harness for the Harley that we're going to use today in this example. And this is where you'll find the point where we plug it in. It's located under the seat on the rear fender. If you have a driver backrest, it's usually under that bracket. Plug-and-play harnesses are only available for the wing and touring Harleys like the FLH and the FLS. Otherwise, you'll use a universal sub-harness. This uses clips that attach over the wires. You'll need to identify the signal wires with a wiring diagram or a test light. Now that isn't all that difficult because there's usually just one small bundle of wires running to the rear fender 
like on this Honda ST1300. This is the installation on my bike. This is what I use, and it works just fine. But I hope you'll pardon the dust under the seat. So let's get to the installation. Now I've pulled the seat on this Harley Softail and located that plug. I'm going to open this plug and insert our sub harness in here. Now as I was looking under the seat, I found something that's important to note on Harleys. You see this little extra module? This makes the turn signals on the bike light up as running lights and it plugs into the same plug as our sub harness. We need to go in front of that so I'll plug our relay system in front of this adapter but they can go together in series. Next I want to size up the wiring that comes out of the relay package to see how much I need to add when I wire on the plug. When it's finished I want the plug to come out somewhere near the hitch ball. doesn't have to be exact. Now I'm preparing the wiring harness to add a plug. There is no standard among motorcycle trailer makers, so the color codes on the relay kit will not typically match up with the color codes for the plug that you're going to attach for a trailer. Here's an example. On the relay kit, the black wire is ground, but on the plug I'm attaching, that wire is white. The point is, wire up by function and not by color. Your trailer maker will supply you with a chart so you can compare the colors and see what wires up to what. If you have a used trailer, you might need to take a 12-volt source like a, a battery to hook up to the trailer and try the lights to see which color drives which lights. For the most durability and reliability, I'm going to solder the wires together, cover each joint with a piece of shrink tubing, heat that shrink tube to cover the connection, and then wrap everything tightly with high-quality vinyl tape. Now that's a clean harness, all ready to be installed. Finishing this project is down to just two steps. First, I'll pull out the sub harness and attach the relay kit. If this were a four wire kit, remember we have that extra piece, I would attach that to the sub harness and then connect in the wiring harness that we just created. After this, I'll wire it to the battery. Now, that can be a challenge on a bike like this where room is tight and you already have a few things attached to the battery. Now I've already attached a fused lead to the positive terminal of this battery. I'm going to attach that to the red lead on the relay package to power it. This is going to drive the lights on the trailer. And don't leave out this fuse because if something happens to the trailer wiring that causes a short, it's going to be this inline fuse that blows out and leaves the rest of the bike's lights untouched. The ground lead can go to the negative post on the battery or to the frame if the bike uses a frame ground like this one. I'll button this up and this bike will be ready to test. Can you see the wiring harness? Here it is. It's down by the bottom of the hitch. When the rider isn't towing, he can stow it here in the saddlebag where it will stay out of the weather. Now I want to touch on just one last point. If you're using a molded plug like this, make sure you use the plug with the exposed ground for your bike. All the potentially hot wires will be inside the plug where they can't make contact with the ground on your bike. The plug with the exposed pins and the shielded ground is the plug that will go on the trailer. So it's time to try it out. After you double check all your connections, it's time for the smoke test. If you turn it on and you don't see smoke, you've passed the test. Then it's on to the functional test. You may remember this little clip from earlier. What I showed you then was a trailer hooked up to this bike for the final test, and it all works. Be sure to stop by our website and check out the trailer accessories and the complete line of motorcycle trailers and campers we offer. We have a lot more videos, too. If you want to learn more about trailering, check out our own motorcycle trailer guide. And if you have questions that aren't answered there, or you need help putting an order together, contact me at dale at openroadoutfitters.com. Thanks again for joining me. I think I'll take this rig out for a road test. Maybe an extended one.